<laughs> hey, I'm recording this, Oscar, if that's okay with you. Got it. So yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm sort of curious. We, we had so much to talk about. I never even really got a chance to ask Mark a little bit more about his background, but maybe can you tell me about yourself or what you're up to or? Oh, I've been here. Actually, I had a bit of a comeback right now because uh, I took, a, let's say, three months or so, a little bit more uh, of a break from all of this. But yeah, before that, I was working with uh, with ES support, the ESBs in, in, in the ES marketplace. I don't know if you know them. But yeah, actually, after that, I came back and, and started from scratch again. Well, that's funny but, because you said the last three months. So in the last three months, I got introduced to EOS. <laughs> uh, and it's been, a lot has happened in the last three months. Oh so. my gosh, it's crazy. It is crazy how much has happened. It's, it's impossible yeah. to keep up. Just trying to keep up with everything is just insane. Exactly. So it's exactly the same we've been thinking. And a lot of people... I noticed, and I knew I wasn't really paying attention to everything, but I knew that the the price was coming down, was crashing, and I, I only by that I knew uh, people are not going to be happy about this. There's a lot of people that I know that are going to be leaving the space, and as a matter of fact, a lot of people did, and several apps that I knew uh, were on EOS just migrated, and it's sad because people left because of the price, but. We have a lot more to offer, and they know they know this because, well, for example, they, I don't know if they, you know the, the team from Nice One. Well, the challenges nice are great guys, and they they I once had the opportunity to work with the uh, with Niels, which is one of the one of the team members, and he said, "Look, I know people are not happy about the the performance of the token, but what I've been telling people is that we don't really care about that. The token can go all the way down to zero. We don't care. What we care is that." We can build here, and this is a, the best place to do it. Well, and that's an interesting sort of dichotomy of perspectives that's occurring because, as a technically astute and curious person, I I'm hooked. You know, I can't get away from EOS now because I'm just too curious and want to be part of whatever's going on. But from a from a from a, a person who's just looking at it from a token price, they're like I. We keep hearing all this talk about whatever, and you know it's like a shitcoin fud kind of yeah. dialogue where they don't really understand. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, people people are they're gonna they're always gonna complain about block one and say ah when as soon as you tell them you say they think of block one and say ah oh, come on block one block one scammed everyone and we're like oh my god this block one thing again. If if not they if they don't mention block one they're gonna mention the i the, the i code they're gonna say all right. You raised $4 billion and did nothing with that. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, this still hurts. I told that, I said that to, to another guy on Twitter the other day, because he was like, come on, $4 billion and you did nothing. And we're, and I was like, oh my God, that, that still hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. It still hurts people that, they, that their chains cannot, have not been able to beat that historical event. Well, I think that narrative's definitely changing. I mean, and Ian has course. done a good job to to, to create yeah, that shift. And a lot of people have been working hard, and and I know in the last three months, a lot of people have left have left at the beginning. But I know by now, a lot of people are committed to stay, and because of all the great things that are, that are happening. So and there's I'll... people like like Glue Dog. I don't know if you know him. Glue Dog is he's a guy that's been around for a long time, but he's He's the one that would say, uh, I don't know if it was him, but I saw him, I saw someone the other day saying, oh, come on, make Block Pierce president already. Like, look. Wait, who, who said that? Glue Dog said that? I don't remember if it was Glue Dog or, or if it was someone else, but I remember that someone said, make Block Pierce president already. And, and I'm like, oh, come on, we're doing our best. Everyone is doing their best. Glue Dog is a very interesting topic and name that you brought up. And I don't even really like that's that's a whole discussion for me that is fascinating because i'm very curious about this blue dog character yeah. i had i had well because what i noticed is he shuts down a lot of dialogue he gets wonky sometimes it's just cussing at people and 
I don't know. You can expect that. You can expect that from someone who's been new from the from the anchor. So. Right, right. Yeah, I, I see that. So, anyways, what's your background? Are you a coder, or what's your deal? Do you have a pop? No, I'm not a coder. What's I'm your, not a what's developer, your... but I've been I've been working uh, in the translation area for for projects for a while. Like I told you, I wasn't in EO support, mm -hmm. and with the ESBs, um, I did a lot of translation and and helped in, in communications and. And stuff like that. So I was here and there and everywhere, but uh, I haven't really been able to to get on on the developing area yet. And like you say, I'm I still haven't been been able to go all the way back to the to the ESI training uh, courses. I but since you brought it up and since you brought it up today, I am glad I'm not the only one receiving the spam messages saying, "Hey, remember they have these courses that you haven't that you haven't finished." Dude. Those courses are awesome. I don't. I want they to are. go back to they them, are. and I don't even have the time because I'm just trying to keep up with the the new EOS news and what's going on. They are, but sadly, I think that by now, with everything that's come up, they are they're gonna they're gonna be left behind because they're not gonna be enough. Because manual well, is coming too. I I agree, but there's some there's just some foundational like just on blockchain. Of course, basics. all the and bases are still there. Yeah, still there and they're gonna be good. But for example, if you if you want to go further than that, you're gonna have to find some other place to go. I've already told the the ENF that they should be offering courses because yes, I know that you're putting up all the documentation there, and it's great because developers can go there. You can can go ask to on the on the developer channel. That is amazing. But what would be amazing too is that I can pull all that on my resume or on my profile on LinkedIn and say, hey, I, I've done this. And not only I have, but it's backed by the ENF, which is a, a pretty nice badge that I would like to, to show to show when people faces. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, look at look at our, our foundation. Uh, the ES Foundation has or or is able to give you a certificate and say, all right, we are the ones who did this? A decentralized uh, community is doing this. Is making this possible. So, are you are you a part? Are you going to join this team? I can't. Uh, I guess Patrick and Ryan are observing, and um, I Sebastian's in the group. I see you're listening. I don't know if he wants to say anything. He's welcome to if he wants to speak up. We're just chatting. Hey, uh, uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I just wanted to join in, see what uh, the group is all about. I didn't really have time to read uh, through all the messages, but nice to meet you. Yeah, sure. Nice to meet you. Um, well, I got. Either. I don't even know how exactly it came out. I was in the middle of, uh, and I'm still in the process of uh, trying to work out a interim solution for the EOSBs for language translation of YouTube videos. Um, which got me delving into uh, what an SRT file is. It has to do with closed captioning. And so right. um, basically, uh, I can share my screen here and just show you uh, since you're here. Uh, let's, let me move these things around. I need to open up. My, my computer is not the fastest. So I try not to have too many things running. But um, uh, I, um, gave, I, I uh, only Jesse, have a laptop. Uh, I do a lot of things on my phone. I think it's... Uh... Yeah, I need to get, I need to, I have actually a faster computer I should probably switch to, but. Um, so anyways, there's this, there's this program I use that's called, it's part of the Blaster Suite. Um, Lingo Blaster is the component that I've been playing around with, but basically it has a API that allows you to connect to a YouTube channel and use is a machine learning AI type translation thing to it can do 10 languages at a time oh so, nice. so basically i was uh just experimenting with this because i purchased the use of the software and have intended use in the future for it but i didn't have an immediate use for it now but seeing this whole issue with language translation come up i thought i'd offer it for uh jesse to try take a stab at and um there's a sort of learning curve with it and i decided to start playing it with it myself but basically, uh, this is the interface. And let me show you um, what base basically 
I've done here. Sorry, my it takes my computer is not the fastest. Oh, good. I got time. And so, uh, let's see here. This is the video I started with, which is a copy of um, of of the uh, original video. And so I've published it into these different languages. And so you see here, there's a column for title and description. Yeah. And then there's a column for subtitles. So really all that means is uh, title and description is uh, literally, let me close this one. And then like, I'll just show you on the, this is the title and description. So this is title, this is description. Right. Close, close captioning is a text that a, a displays on the screen while it's playing. And if you, if you go here, now this, this text that appears in the screen is automatically generated by uh, YouTube's machine learning algorithm. So when you put in the primary languages English and you speak in English, it eventually auto captions it. And you can see the, the transcript right here. You can actually look at the transcript. If there is one, it'll show you it. But this is just the front end. This is what any you know, normal person could see. But uh, if you were to change languages now on this one, see now, for example, I know I, I'm pretty certain I did this, I translated this one into French. So now you'll see the, uh, Ah, okay, so this one I actually did not translate. Which one is this? YouTube. Okay, so this is my new one. Let me back up. Let's go to this one. So when it comes, when it first comes online, it only comes up in the primary language. And when you change the language selector, it doesn't change the title and description. But see now, see my language selectors in French, this one's showing up in French. And then if I uh, play it, or I could do it this way, just because it's faster, you can see the transcriptions are all in French. Now, all of this French that's in here is a translation based on YouTube's original machine learning algorithm. So it's only, the translation's only gonna be as good as the base script it starts with, which I did yeah. not review you know i didn't go through or whatever yeah right but they are pretty good at what they're doing it's so. it's it's not bad the problem is is i don't know exactly what happens when people say um or ah because it shows up as um and ah i don't know what the language translation does with that in the foreign language right um Correct. and then this software just so you know when you deal with the actual so uh, right now, this is dealing with the, uh, I'll just walk you through this. Oops. So I'm uh, actually, there's two, there should be more here. Refresh videos, I should see more. Okay, so like uh, this one right here has no, I haven't done the language translation on See, I put a V2. And I hate this stupid tutorial thing keeps popping up in this interface. You just can't get around it, I guess. <laughs> just so tired of it. And now it's defaulting to my prior language selections. It, gives, it lets me do up to 10 at a time. Okay. Then I hit next step. And we close that again. And now it lets me preview and edit the trans or the primary starting language, which is English. So it starts off, this is what it's pulling out of the YouTube video. And what you're supposed to do in here is exclude like proper names. So like if it said Jesse Jaffe, you don't want that to be attempted to be translated. You know, like Mark, Ryan, Oscar, I don't know, you know, what'll happen. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna exclude anything. But you know, excluding things could be like acronyms or just weird things that don't translate well into other languages like what happens with lingo blaster you know what i'm saying should it should this be excluded and i'm just gonna right. exclude it. 
you know and so so basically you get this what is shit whoops see this this software is glitching there it goes okay so now we'll just go ahead and exclude that for then we hit save then we go to the next step and now what it's doing is see it's cloud translating all the different translations oh, and so, wow. cool. so now none of this stuff is actually being pushed to the youtube channel yet it's still all to hit it's still doing the translation in the cloud it won't publish till i hit publish this interface will allow me to edit the titles and descriptions in the various languages but when i change the captions it doesn't allow me to edit them i have to actually publish them to youtube and then edit them on youtube i see so you know that may be a better feature you know i don't know I, I i don't know what the best way to deal with this is i'm just showing you how this way works so uh, so yeah. you see uh, spanish is finished and it's showing what i was trying to tell you the the before before we caught up the other call was that there is this channel on youtube called vsauce he's been around for for a while now he's a he's an educational uh, channel that's pretty good i feel like it. i love it and he has exactly what you're saying i don't know how he does it but when you change the the language of your even of your, on your phone on the on the app it changes everything everything it changes the, the title the, the description and the the captions as well and i don't know how he's doing that but it's pretty it's pretty good all right and so i started i started looking at existing services and alternatives that already are out there this was one and they they actually use a sort of crowdsource type of solution that um, I thought was interesting. Maybe it's something that we can learn from or not. I don't know. Um, another thing that I just wanted to point out, and I already mentioned this before in some of the other groups, is Vicky is like a, a Asian Netflix. Um, you find content here that is largely Asian produced, Korean, Chinese, um, not as much Japanese, but mainly Chinese, and I think some Korean. But if you look at their community page, it's sort of interesting. See what they have here, the top contributors. They have a method where the actual viewers become contributors for language translation. And, pretty good. I, and I, I became fascinated with this because I watched these videos and at the end of the videos, they give credit to the team that was about, I don't even think they pay these people. I think they're like, there's just so many uh, foreign language speakers that speak enough English. They, you know, I don't. So I thought, man, can we, can we, can we tokenize them? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just that's, so that's similar to to what the Translate Me network is doing. I know. They, they I know. Like that. And they are they are tokenizing the they have the, the whole platform is tokenized and they are rewarding people. Yeah, and so I just thought, you know, I don't know. I just thought these were interesting kinds of parallels, you know. So here we are with this. And um, so continuing on, I just want to show you, this is version two, right? So if, let's get to, oh, I don't know if this, I don't think I published this. Yeah, this is, okay, version two, yeah. So if you go to version two now, um, you see, there's see it shows up in English, and um, let's pause this. And if we go to the back end of version two, which is this one, version two. Okay, you notice there's only English. It doesn't even have uh, subtitles yet because the YouTube built-in uh, captioning process has not run on this video yet because I just uploaded it. But now what I'm going to do is go back here and I'm going to hit publish. Watch what happens. It's done. Okay, now if I go back here and I refresh this, uh, look. I, I, I not only, I forgot to change my console. See, now I have all the languages because I just pushed them all out there, but I don't have the captions yet. 
Now I want to get back to English because I hate it when I do this to myself on the screen because then I forget how to get back. I'll go over here. I think this is the easier way. If you get stuck in another language, because when you use this language selector, if it puts it, you put it in Chinese, you literally can't read the screen anymore. I just remember if you're viewing it, there's this line right here, and it's the one, two. See, you, I can read this. I can understand French well enough to get it back. But just be careful. <laughs> okay, so so anyways, uh, but even though I have um, these other languages in the title descriptions, I don't have the caption text yet because the caption text does not exist. So I have no way to translate it. <laughs> but like, for example, uh, so now it's back to English. I could choose Chinese or Korean, for example. And I'm pretty sure, just so you know, Korean is the very bottom one. <laughs> That's how I think it is. That's what I think. I could be wrong. Now, no, this, it's about right. Yeah. This should work. Whereas this would have been English earlier. So I should see the title and description in Korean. See, notice it didn't change the word YouTube. I didn't exclude it, but it decided not to translate it because there's no, see now this EOS translation team fractally. I did not exclude it, but it didn't know what to do with it. You know, it didn't know how to translate that proper name. So see, I did highlight Lingo Blaster and see it, I didn't exclude Mark, Ryan and Oscar, but see again, it had no translations for those. Right, but in the, um like in the translation of the written um, stuff is there grammar problems or i don't speak korean <laughs> what do you speak russian yeah. you i speak a... german so german let's have... try german i got german yeah. i got german for you uh, except i don't know how to get to german <laughs> from uh, it's korean. deutsch uh deutsch, deutsch. there it is yeah, it is. Oh, yeah that's right Duh. Sprachen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> yeah, well said. Okay. So you tell me how this looks to you. Or actually, you know what I can do is just this. Here, I'm pasting this into the chat. If I can find the chat, let me get out of Telegram. I don't want that open. Yeah, grammar is perfect. It's, it's not perfect. bad. I don't think, I, I didn't look that bad. There's no mistake in it. So, it... so if you want to, I just sent that exact video which has no captions, but just translated titles and descriptions. And if you click on the, uh, this one, uh, oh yes, up in stage, the only other public video is, has captions translated. I believe. See here. And another way you can do it is like this. Now, so this is available to the front end user without back end access. But see, the problem is, is that if you wanted to allow users, because the way I'm thinking about it is from a resource standpoint, it makes sense to me, man, it would be great if we can just rely on YouTube's auto captioning or auto dictation voice to text process as a, a quality, call it a quality based script. So we just use machine learning to translate it. If we have to have a reviewer go back and review every language, it seems like so much more time and effort. I'd rather have it to be like when someone notices a mistake, they can report it, you know, and add it or something, you know, and right, reward right. it. Or, you know, I don't know how that That's would right. work. Yeah. And I think over time, the other thing is, is there's two things I see happening is as time passes, 
a better understanding will develop of proper names that should be excluded from translation. And as more time passes, there might actually be a proper translation of names. You, you follow me what I mean by that? Like EOS yeah, foundation, like, foundation there, there, there could be an exactly, actual Chinese. It's not only translation, but also interpretation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's needed. Right. So basically, I, I spent just a little bit of time. I mean, I probably have spent just yesterday and today really delving in to how captioning works with YouTube, just realizing there's a huge value, not only for me to understand this from the, what I can help what I can contribute to the EOS ecosystem, but just from a, a web development standpoint, you know, there's a lot of good information here that uh, could benefit just to, for YouTube viewers and making the service available to have their videos translated, you know? Like I can do that right now with the software. Oh, another thing you should know about the software, let's continue with this, um, if you don't mind. Um, so I'm gonna go down to Captionizer and I'm just gonna close that window for now and close that window because I don't need it. But um, so this video, I have titles and descriptions, but no. Uh, so this, so now I'm at Captionizer. So now I'm gonna select this video V2. And the next step. Okay, so now it's gonna want me to choose the languages. Ah, darn it. I thought I changed my language back, but I guess I didn't. Or maybe I did and it's just not showing. Yeah, I did and it just didn't show you. Okay, so I don't need that. Okay, so right now you see there's no subtitles. So these are the languages I want um, to, to translate into and the selector disappeared. So now this is a pain in the butt. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what translate me is working with but um this thing does 10 at a time and it always drives me nuts trying to remember which ones are in this list whoops i missed the Is and how exactly would, would this uh, help like, the BOS community? Like, well, these are the top languages of the bees, the ones okay. I'm using. And so these are ones that uh, part of the reason I'm using these is this is this, these are the these are the groups where uh, Jesse has teams to verify or proof the translation. And ultimately, I think that uh, Personally, I like to see it translated in every freaking language there is, <laughs> you know, available, <laughs> you know. Um, but see, for me to actually click on these and prioritize them, it's just a pain in the, it's just a lot of pointing and clicking. I feel like as a WordPress developer, I do way too much pointing and clicking. Russian, did I get? All right, which one am I missing here? Arabic, was that on my list? French created. Spanish. Um, I, I don't think you are missing French. Any active, uh, any active hive. There are okay. some. Well, let's, hives playing, but. I, I, I know I did 10 here, but I'm only doing nine here because I want to show you what happens. I noticed this little, there's a couple little glitchy things that happens with the software that you, you should be aware of, or I don't know if you should be, but anyone involved with a um translate me solution to be aware of so now we're on this page where it says captions editor and it says there's nothing here so i go read captions from youtube and no captions found and see that's what we're stuck on uh dang it we have to wait for the captions to come in but basically um i'm gonna just hmm it won't let me read so basically, once those captions uh, appear, there'll be a uh, added thing here where it'll say published in this column. And then I'll be able to pull in the captions from YouTube and then export them out to the other texts. Um, 
I guess I can't obviously complete it till that populates. I, it takes, it usually happens the same day. So, oh, here's some other things. I don't know if you caught this before, but. Oh, interesting. It's not showing it now. See, that's what uh, what I was telling you before. You can actually upload the, the file. Yeah, you can. Oh, there, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's what I was looking for. So, do you know? Uh, do you you can upload the file, but do you know SRT file structure? That's the other thing I used learning. See if I can find an article. Yeah, this this was actually a good article that I read, but this is how the it's really straightforward. Uh, oh, we got a ten minute. I'm posting this in the chat. Um, I can host. Um, I, I have Zoom Premium, so. Oh, you want to? If you want to switch, we can. I don't care. But basically, uh, what I notice is there's this SRT file format. But I I mentioned this earlier in, uh, just to. Uh, Let's just go to, I'm going to a video that's already got translations. Let's try this one. Whoops. Okay, so this one actually has subtitles published, but uh, this is the other interesting thing. I was not aware of other types of closed captioning formats that I haven't looked at yet. I don't know if these are proprietary or open source or they're more, data rich than SRT, but all SRT is is a is a timestamp of the beginning and the end of when the text should appear in the sequence of a video. So it's not just the text, it actually has timestamps of when that the, the those words should begin. Let me just find the where's the example? I don't know if there did I miss it already? I guess, but basically it's, this is just all it is. Hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. So you have a number to another number and then text that appears below it. There's a screenshot up here, I think. Is there? Oh, here it is. Yeah. That's how it looks like. And so I don't know, like I, I can't imagine you're gonna have a human user generate you know what i'm you know what i'm saying like dealing with this because you you screw up the numbers here get the syntax wrong and it breaks it um and when you look at it from this perspective uh the uh the thing that when you because one of the things what i was trying to get from jesse originally is i was trying to download the entire transcript but you can't do that unless you're the youtube account creator like if you look at it from the front end, it's just a user. The most you can do is, is show the transcript, which is shows I mean, it like this. You actually can, but not without, I mean, not directly on YouTube. You have to go to the third party. Right, and do it. right, right. The service like, a, I don't know, there's a YouTube, a YouTube SRT downloader. You can just look, oh. uh, look for that online. Last thing, uh, this the way this software works, is I have an account that allows me to connect my YouTube account, um, which this is a YouTube account that I've connected. And this is actually incorrect. I should refresh it. Um, and see this one over here? This is actually uh, different. What I did is I purchased something called the agency link. I don't know why it's not showing anything. Oh, there it goes. See there, it shows four videos now. So basically the idea behind the agency link is I don't have, uh, I have a client that wants to allow me to translate their videos for them, but that they don't want to give me access to full access to their YouTube account. So I copy this link, I send them the link, and then uh, I'm going to pretend, I say I'm the client, whoops, I'm the client now. Okay, and I'm, I'm clicking on this link. And now this is the account that actually uh, my YouTube account is associated with it. So I'm just pretending 
this one, this is now I'm the client over here. This is me as a client. And as a client, you actually choose which channel you can give access to. It doesn't give them full access to the entire shebang. And Ooh. so, so I choose this channel. Okay. And then what does it do? It says, see, edit, and permanently delete your YouTube videos, ratings, comments, and captions. Manage your YouTube account. So the idea behind this is a client could give me access to control one YouTube channel. But it is sort of scary because in theory, this API access, I could delete their videos or lose their data potentially, you know, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and hit allow just to show you how this works. Okay, so now it says I can close this page, so I'll close the page. So in theory, if I refresh this, I should see another channel out of here, which is here. There's no videos in it, but these are essentially clients. This one and this one are clients of mine, I guess. Okay, so it only works when you have access to the original account who published the video. Right, right. I, can, I can't edit the video without having uh, direct access or API access. And that API access is granted through this agency link or by adding a YouTube account. But adding the YouTube account, see, I can't add another one because uh, I need to get upgrade my version. And I don't want to remove this. Well, I guess I could remove it. Would it make a difference? I don't think it would make a difference. I'll just add it back just so you can see. I mean, it's really no different. Oh no, oh, that's weird. Interesting. See, it's much as me playing with this software. That's funny, it wants to like, let's try it, let's try it now. Did I just break it? <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm getting a call right now that I have to answer. Okay. But, Go. Yeah, oh, you here. Yeah, it's really interesting, and I think it's it's awesome for the bees to have that. So uh, see you next time. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It's sort of funky. So anyways, this is what I'm working with as an interim solution for language translation. And um, I personally don't, I mean, I don't mind getting paid or helping out with language translation, but honestly, I don't know if it's the best value I can provide, but you know, it's something. No, but it's, it's very useful because for example, I, I I said it before. The every time the the the, the foundation publishes something, when they when the ENF publishes something, they do it on on English, uh, Korean and Chinese. But other languages have to, I don't know, figure out what they're gonna do if they want to have access to the same content. So they have to go somewhere and, uh, you know, do do a translation themselves. If they yeah. speak the language, right? And if I am pretty sure they are doing that because they know that there is a lot of people from from Asia, from these countries, that are actually using this information. Right. And if they're doing this, is because they they are acknowledging the fact that we need to broaden the scope and offer the the information for a wider audience. So this is something that we need. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And the way I look at it is this, is that this whole deal, dealing with uh, the web in its transition, as well as um, the marketing aspect to it, we're using an awful lot of third party services. So for example, Medium, okay? Medium as a website is a great place to post content because you're going to get good ranking with when you post on the medium domain, but the medium website in itself does not have any methodology for multilingual versioning. You know what I'm saying? No, so it what, doesn't. It doesn't. So what it's you end up doing is, as you cram all these languages into one page, what are we gonna do when we wanna handle more languages, have one post from 20 different languages all in one page? It doesn't make sense to me. You get what I'm saying? It's sort of like, I don't know exactly how long- And, we, your, 
And your options are either doing that or doing a different post for every language. I know, I know, I know. And so, I mean, but see, the, I guess it's the question of how long are we going to continue to use Medium? How long are we going to continue to use YouTube? How long are we going to continue to use Web2? You know what I'm saying? Like, when are we moving to what and how? And, you know, when does well, it make sense? Yeah. You know? Because right now, it's almost like we need to build transition tools. We need to build tools, cobble tools to deal with the third party proprietary services that we're all hodgepodging together. Because it's just madness right now. Like all the different platforms that you're used between Facebook and Twitter and Discord and Telegram and Medium and, and Mighty Networks and, you know, this OAuth login and this crypto wallet and that thing. It's just like, my gosh, how many. All right. Sorry about that. Ah, don't worry about that. Uh, we had Hive for for publishing too on the blockchain, but you know how how that ended. So, I well not I really. That, that web, honestly, <laughs> that website is the one I was, I was talking about. That if you if you want to download the the subtitles from a channel you're not the owner of, you can just use something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I saw neat. that. I was. Just... Yeah, I was just looking at this. So anyways, I, I was just interested uh, with the uh, whole um, subtitling thing because it seems as though it's, a, it's something that can provide immediate value to the community. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. We, we, I mean, the the translate network, the, the guys have been, have been trying to do something about it for a while. They they started last year, I think. To, I, got, I got a uh, looping audio issue here. Hold on, I think. Um. Yeah, I can hear it too. What's going? I wonder if that's my settings or try talking again. No, I I don't think it's happening because. Okay, there, I, heard the same, I heard the same looping when you were talking. Um, uh, the Translate Me Network guys, they, they try to do it, uh, they've been trying to do it ever since last year. They try to deploy on EOS, but you know what they say? They, they, they said that they've been perfectioning the system in order to, to actually deploy the chain. And we're waiting for that. But in the meantime, we need to come up with, with something, with, with a solution. Okay, I want to figure out this. Well, not this one, not this one. Download is what it is. Where's the download? There's two other file formats that I'm not familiar with that it mentions in YouTube, and I want to figure out if they're proprietary. Oops, dang it. VTT, my computer is so slow. Ah, I don't want to unpublish. Okay, download. All right, right here. VTT and SBV. SVT was it? Because I don't know if these are proprietary or if they're a more advanced. Ah, right. I just heard. I just found an article about it. Okay, what did you find? Was it SVB? SBV, yeah. SBV. Because I didn't know if these are like newer standards that are open source or if there's a wider adoption or I don't know. Probably it's a form for this point in time, text tracks to just subtitles or captions using the track element. Oh, see, VTT is HTML5, so it might be better to start thinking in this direction then. <laughs> I don't know. Because like a lot of times, you know, this, this captioning, this SRT stuff has been around for almost a decade now, and still people haven't caught on to it. <laughs> well, this article is pretty good. It has a lot of examples. Share the link uh, in the chat. 
I did, I did. Oh, you did. I'm sorry, I missed it. I don't see my chat. That's why. Oh, this is bizarre. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry about that. We'll close these ones. Well, here's the good news is the information in SRT files is all available for indexing in search engines. So the whole narrative of transcript of what's spoken all of a sudden becomes data as achievable or discoverable by search engines when you do this all in right. all the different languages. Um, this software also has this thing called Rankerizer that allows you to, to uh, it does something to help improve the keyword search for YouTube videos. I have no idea what it's actually doing. But this is sort of a little bit outside of the realm of language translation, but it is within the realm of web marketing, and it's one of the options with the software program. Oh, since you're here, check this out. I have a voice generator, and it takes up to 20,000 uh, words per second, or per run, excuse me. And um, I was going to attempt it. I did the white paper, uh, the fractally white paper, PDF in Russian um, using this, but um, what I found out is the amount of time it takes me to do this, it equals the amount of time it takes me to get weird characters out of my text. So when I dealt with the white paper, um, the PDF had a lot of header and footer and you know weird symbols yeah. and things that just was yeah that, that makes that makes stuff it because <sighs> after you get the, the the transcript or the translation done from a from from a, a document like this then you can have to go and verify and take all the headers off all the sometimes even the the numbers of the pages right and so see i didn't i was just i sh didn't really document my process in this Thing well, but um, I started screwing around with here. Let me uh, just play something for you. We I don't have any German though. I didn't do anything in German. <laughs> but here's the. Uh, this is. Um, this is a. 我们在Pomelo上对EdenElection的宣传是于几个月前，当时我们正在讨论。Eden In fact, this this software, I I don't I don't I haven't had a lot of experience with AI dictation, but I'm I'm thinking this software might be one of the higher quality versions of language. Like if uh take something you want to translate, give me some text. Do you have anything that's a value that we could do? Um, how about this? Pomelo pitches, let's take see that's what I started doing for people. I was just screwing around with the software. And I started translating people's Pomelo pitches into foreign languages and just posting it on Telegram. So let's do this one. What a good, what a good Pomelo pitch to have translated into another language. <laughs> so like, I was just trying around stuff like this. Bam, okay. And now without even looking at the text, without even worrying about if there's anything in here that I need to deal with, I'm gonna hit translate, English, German, cause we have a German speaker here, I'm assuming. <laughs> I hit translate, okay. And now without even letting Sebastian review this text, I'm just gonna hit AI voice. And it's choosing uh, Nina, and I'm going to hit generate voiceover. And no, I'm not going to split it. But you're supposed to add commas, put enters, space things out to make it pause and whatever. I don't even care. I'm just going to just let her rip, see what happens. My voiceover has been created. Then I go down here, and here it is, and I can hit play. Echtzeitübersetzungslösung. 
Translate.me ist ein Grassroots-Projekt für maschinelle Übersetzung, das dem Zusammenbruch der Kommunikation zwischen Communities auf EOS und Online-Plattformen entgegenwirken soll. Translate.me kann einen Open-Source-Dienst für Entwickler oh, that's und... Oh, das ist nur die Preview, ich glaube, so es nicht die ganze Sache macht. Ja, aber es war gut. Es gab keine Verletzung und die Stimme voice sounded not too much of a computer. All right. So, so, for, so for me... The, so for me, if you feel that way, I'm like, man, there's enough technology already we can slap together to make of use of for functional value where maybe we don't have to proof every single thing or over time we can get community and put our feedback to improve it or whatever. But it's just like, man, the amount of time it would take for every single video to be viewed in every language improved is just, it just complexifies no, it. No. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's fine. Like for the basics, um, for people who, I mean, I only speak English and German, so for, would it be good? I would like to use it. Oops, Translate on. ME is a grassroots project. So anyways, uh, this thing will do up to 20,000 words per run in terms of translating it from text to an AI voice. And just so you know, check this out, uh, Sebastian. Uh, okay, now, some of these voices are not AI voices. The difference between the AI voice and a regular voice, I think it has a better inflection of language. But uh, let's go to standard and let's try a male voice. Or actually, can this do it? See, AI doesn't work in that. Let's do any of the male voices work at AI? No, probably not then. So let's just let's just do this one and just let's listen to the difference since you're here. And so what I'm saying is, man, all this work coming to this interface and copying and pasting and going over here and it's like for me as a WordPress developer, I do a lot of pointing and clicking and copying and pasting. And I'm just like, man, can't we make this into a machine learning script? <laughs> Echtzeitübersetzungslösung. Translate ME ist ein Grassroots-Projekt für maschinelle Übersetzung, das dem Zusammenbruch der Kommunikation zwischen... I, I even think that one sounds a little more robotic. Yeah, I don't think German, but that one sounded like a robot. Right. So these AI yeah. voices are better. You know what I'm saying? Like this one? Yeah, they are, they are by far. I mean, this, this sounds like a real person having bad uh, cell phone connection. No. Okay, so now let's check but, this out. Uh, going back to this, if I copy this back in, let me just show you one last thing here. If I, because uh, I don't like translating from an already translated language. I always like to go back to English and because that's my base language. I don't know if it makes a difference. Oh yeah, I guess it's, there's, so now um, look at my language options. There's uh, 90, I, I think there's 98 different languages. Is that what they said? Oh, no, no, no. No, I think there is, actually, I think there is. We'll find out. Uh, but let's try another, does, do you want to take another stab at a different language just to hear? Uh, you can put Spanish, I speak Spanish. Okay, Spanish, let's try Spanish. All right, Castilian, Catalan, Mexican, U.S. I guess Spanish, U.S. That's what Veronica said. Does it make a difference to you? Uh, Mexican is actually more, uh, more in the center, so it's the closest okay. we have to a standard. I, if you understand Spanish, I'd like to hear what you think of a Mexican Spanish translation. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> or because I don't know, I don't know how it actually translates it much different. And see now. Because I chose to translate it to that, it's already selected Spanish language. And now let's go to AI voices. And now, does, again, it's choosing a female, doesn't support AI in the male voice. So let's just go with the one that it's giving, suggesting to me. And I'm not using any punctuations. Okay, so now I should have it here and we can test listen to it. Solución de traducción en tiempo real. Translate me es un proyecto de traducción automática de base que contrarrestará la interrupción de Damn, la comunicación entre la Yeah, and check this out. Speaking rate, you can adjust it. So, it's a pretty good 
software program for what I paid for it and what it can do. It's not bad, honestly. And I'm not suggesting like the last thing I want to do is be like the full time copy and paster for <laughs> the US community, <laughs> you know, but you know, and so this is what happens is I download these things now. Okay, so let's download this one. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw these into the uh, Telegram group, I think. So if you want, Solución de I want to make sure I got the right one, 530. Oh, I didn't download that one. Okay, yeah, that one is the non. Uh, so basically I have one AI, two AI language translations and one non-AI. And Echtzeit what I'm going to do Lösung. is uh, throw them in the Telegram group here in a second. Um, but what I was thinking is, I don't know why, I convert everything. These are MP3s. I convert them to AUG just because I'm like open source, you know, obsessed. And I'm like, AUG is more open source than MP3. Is there going to be licensing issues with using MP3 or whatever? But when you do this, these files have no metadata, no metadata whatsoever. So as I usually convert them and then I go back and add tags into them because I want the audio files to be discoverable, you know, but I don't know how much effort because all that tagging takes up so much time and it could all be automated is the way I look at it. It could be all be done better. Um, so let me get Telegram. So if you guys want to listen to these more, just play with them. Or, and the other thing I found out is AUG files, when I convert them, they take up a lot less space than the, uh, the TeamViewer versions or not the what I'm saying, the uh, MP3 versions. I think I should be able to just copy these into Telegram. So anyways, that sort of uh, deterred me a little bit from the video, the second video I was making for Jesse. <laughs> well, this could work very well for, for podcast. Yeah, you know, and I just thought it'd be awesome if we came out with a really slick, simple interface for the workflow for uh, multimedia production that we use in the OS community that we can sell the whole rest of the world onto. I thought that'd be awesome. Yeah, no, definitely. I have been wondering, nice. does this, uh, this software do the opposite? Does it do it the other way around? Like you have an audio file and you can convert it to text? Um, no, I don't think. It goes text to audio. It doesn't, it does this thing, but this is just more like for marketing. No, I forgot what this thing that even does. Like I haven't really even used this software. Oh, I don't have script -alo. No, those are just built in scripts. Speech -alo only generates voice. Wait, well, let's see what this training thing is. Oh, that's just a tree. Yeah, no, no. So basically, uh, we're relying on uh, YouTube's machine learning uh, voice to text captioning, I guess. But I definitely think this VTT, I mean, it doesn't look that different from SRT. No, but the fact that you said that the, SR, the SRT are indexed. <coughs> Yeah, it's very good. I don't know about this, uh, this VTT though. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's no different. I don't think, um, I think it should definitely be indexed too, but yeah, this is all, I mean, that's a whole lot of content that's not being indexed that could be. And just by virtue of making a, a video, um, uh, what do you call it, translated into other languages, that in itself was a boost in uh, Google and search engine algorithms. You know, let alone what viewers you actually get that are watching those videos now, yeah. you know, but, you know, and, and like I said, you know, having a cookie cutter automated machine learning way would be really slick, you know, <laughs> just like, like, 
Because the thing is, is there's always going to need time and energy for improvement and real human beings. But if we could just get a good bulk of stuff done with a high degree of quality, you know, at a low, you know, where it's all basically technologically leveraged, I think that would be awesome. Because we're generating so much content now that, you know, can't be kept up with. Yeah, it's difficult to keep up because there is a lot of things. There, there are a lot of things coming up. So. so the other thing I was sort of curious about is, um, this is just a side note, is I don't know side if anyone, note is, I don't know if anyone, there I go, uh, heard about the uh, feedback from Mac developers on, because uh, I know they were uh, going to survey were, uh, gonna sur in terms of Mandel development, uh, how many people are developing on Macs. And I was like, man, we shouldn't exclude Mac developers. Like if they stop that now, they're probably not gonna pick it up again in the future. And I was just wondering, I didn't know, I didn't really hear anyone talking about that. Maybe it's in English only. <laughs> Let's see if I can find any, anything about it there. Cause there, there is definitely a, a channel about that, I think. Let me see. Mm. Let's see if my thing finished. Uh, I bet you it, one of the this thing might have finished uh, or not. caption. No, I didn't find it, but there must be something somewhere. Still not, it looks like. Oh, okay. It still has a transcript, it says. So I should refresh this and see a change here. So right now it says nothing published in subtitles. So if I hit refresh, I should see something in this column say published. Yeah. And I'm making Oops, a video so today. Pause this uh, dual purpose video. All right. So. Now you see it says published because the YouTube automatic thing came on. This is the danger I found out if you use English US. It, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but if you use English US, what ends up happening is when you try to watch it in English, it actually shows the wrong language because it just auto selects another language. So if you run into that problem, just remember. If you're confused, just do that, change it to English. So anyways, uh, right now, if I were like to go here and I were to switch into German, you will see that the description and title will change, but the closed caption text is still in English. Okay, so we see the German, we see the German, and then the YouTube German. I'm going to close Telegram so don't need it open. But if we go to here and we transcript and Ziegen, it's in English. And the reason is English because we have no German transcripts. No, that do. You have it, you have it, but for the title and description, not for. Right, the subtitle, but that's right. This is a moment when you go to the to the other place, right now. Right now, so now I'm going to go through this because we couldn't do it earlier because it didn't have the base English text. Now it's there. Oh wait, I don't even know if this video is because uh, I've removed the account and re-added it. Yeah, okay, it's there. So this is the one I'm working on because it's the version two, and I click on it. Whoops, ah, I hate this stupid. I click on it, it's selected, I close this window, I hit next step, I choose, click close this window, I have to choose my languages. See, this is so tiny, I wish I just could just choose the same languages again, you know? Can you make that, in, can we build a better interface? Uh, and I always forget which exact languages it is, and I have to scroll down. I just like a batch select that I could program in here for my 10, Korean, and I'm even going to do 
an imperfect job and just show you what happens when I get frustrated. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, German, and then, okay, I'm just going to do seven for now, just because I really don't, this video is getting deleted anyways. I was just messing around with it because I was, okay, so there's no captions here. I hit read captions. Now it should pull something in. When I tried doing this before, it didn't pull anything in. Yeah, we got stuck at this point because he told you right. that there were none. But okay, this moment, it's see now, end. this is the SRT file displayed in this interface. It will not let me edit. So Jesse asked me, can we review and modify the edits here? And it will not let me is what I found out. But this is not the edit. I mean, this is just English. So let's go to the next step. I mean, not so there, now, but you can edit the, one, the original one in YouTube before doing that. Right. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But once you deal with that base one, it's sort of like the only way you're going to edit the translated versions is on YouTube after they're published. I can't edit them through the screen is what I'm saying. Okay. See now, see now it's showing me Spanish, but see, I can only view it. I can't edit. So basically when this finishes, all I can do is publish it or not. So if I like the translation 90%, go, oh, I want to change this one word here. I have to actually publish it to YouTube, then go back and edit it on YouTube. If I want to take advantage of this method of translating which obviously it's a lot faster than trying to manually do it with all these time sequencing oh man So I didn't do the 10 that I normally did just for expediency and I'm lazy because I'm deleting this video anyways, but I did do Spanish and German because we have some uh, evaluators of those languages. So I hit publish. Now notice, see here, it, it only shows, uh, it only shows English. And if I refresh this page, it doesn't, it should not change. And it's refreshing. Oh, except. Ah, see, why did it do this? Because I changed the language selection over here. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't care. I'm going to leave it that way. I can deal with German. Um, so right now, you see there's still no things. The second I hit this and hit publish. And dun, dun, dun. It should now publish all of those. It's taking a little longer than last time. Okay, so now if I come back over here and refresh this, now remember I only did seven of the 10. We'll figure out which, which ones I forgot to do now here. Okay, see, notice I didn't do Chinese, Turkish, and Swahili. So they're still showing unpublished, but all these now are showing published. And so if I come back over here and notice that this is still in English without doing anything but refreshing the page, this should now be in German. If, if, it, does, if it disappears, I have to reopen the window, but I should have now a German version. And... I can verify that by reopening it. Voila. Okay. But if I go to Chinese or Swahili or Turkish, we're still going to be in the halfway done stage where the translation is occurred through the title and description, but not the, uh, in the closed captioning. So uh, I think I can get to Chinese and see how much Chinese is. I believe these are Chinese, and I think this is Chinese simplified. And we're running out of time again. And I think at this time, I'm just going to call it quits here in a second.
Okay, so now I am in Chinese, Chinese title description. But if I go, whoops, not that one. If I go here and here, this should no be Chinese. See, see, this is a problem. Look what it's done. Yeah, it's it's showing you German because the whole page is in German. Right, and I have German subtitles. Exactly. Otherwise, you would be you would be seeing English ones. Yes, and what I found out is if you do if you choose English when you upload the video, you should choose English and not English U.S. Because when you choose English U.S., um, it displays like Chinese captions because it it. it it sees English as different as English US, which is partly a function of the software. Um, so I've learned not to use English US. So now we go back here. Oops, I got uh, obviously. Uh, let's let's think. Uh, Chinese shows German because I was in. Hold on a second. What happens? So, Korean, I did. What happens with Chinese traditional? Because I didn't use, I don't know if Chinese simplified and Chinese traditional are the same thing. See, uh, look at this one. <laughs> so these are some of the weird glitchy things. See, these are some of the weird glitchy things that happen. Okay. And this needs to be addressed because this is going to be a, a real user issue. Whether you like it or not, every user has the ability to choose every language. The second I get done just doing some languages, you get weird glitchy things like this. Where I'm in Chinese traditional now, the YouTube interface is in Chinese, okay? But my language is in English. It's still in English for title description. Yet, whoops, damn it. The closed captioning has defaulted to I think that's Hindi. Yeah, Hindi. See, that's why. Why? I don't understand this. It has something to do with things I don't understand. But it has probably to do with the fact that the back end doesn't have all the languages and it's defaulting. You know, like when I choose, this is, this I believe is Chinese simplified. But how how it knows that, I don't know. I mean, let's refresh this because I'm, um, but yeah, it's sort of like what I realized is that after I first did this, I went back to English and English was displaying Hindu. And I was like, and it really came back to that English US thing. I had two columns of English. And so basically there wasn't a captioned um, text for English. And so it chose the Hindi version instead. Whoops, I guess I need to fix my language selector. I'm still in, oh yeah, I'm in traditional Chinese. So in a sense, you, if you solve a solution for some languages, the way YouTube is behaving, at least with this third party software, is you sort of break it or create a problem for other languages. You know what I'm saying? It's like one thing to go through and for me to test it fit for the 10 languages I translated to, but do I have to go and test it for every other single language that YouTube offers it in? <laughs> That's nuts. So I don't know, I don't know why exactly that happens. I mean, are you following my, my concern? Yeah, but I, I have no idea either. Yeah, and so it could be a function of this, this, this application that I'm using. Maybe it's not interfacing with YouTube properly, um, or that's just a, a nature of the beast. Because like these languages here is one thing, but like if you go to one of my other videos, for example, I have it like um, like if you go to this one and we look at the subtitles, oops, not that one. Okay, so this one I was, see this is what happens is when you choose English United States, later the automatic captioning doesn't classify it as United States, it classifies it as as uh, English. So you get a mismatch where you get one variant with title and description and no subtitles, and then another variant with subtitles and no title and description. 
uh, which is bizarre. Um, but can, can you, uh, when you click on edit, can you delete one of the one of the tracks, one of the yeah, subtitles? yes, you can. And I think, okay, like for this one, um, let me go back to your your question. So I'm still figuring this out because this is me playing around with YouTube. Um, and so what I noticed is this is the original language I published the video in, okay? So before I do anything, probably the thing to do here is edit the video and change the language. So let's try doing that first. So if I come over here, oh wait, not that one, not that editor, uh, the description editor. I believe it was this one I'm working on. Okay, so down here. Oh no, I have no way, okay, there it is. See this? This is where I made the mistake. You follow me? Yeah. Because if this is actually a different field than what the YouTube automatic captioning process is, so it creates a new data row. So I don't want to be like that anymore, I decided. <laughs> so if I do this, will it merge my thing into, uh, no, it's not going to. So now look what it's, it, interesting, because what I noticed what happened is, uh, even though I changed this, it won't, it won't, it won't let me save the changes. Because I've already I've already published it, I think is why. Do you follow me? Um, yeah, so you have to republish the video. Well, no, I'll show you what we do. Is first off, when you first publish a video, don't choose United States. Just choose English. If the video is in English, just choose English. That's lesson number one. If lesson you messed up, you're gonna have to take it down and upload it again. Oh, I don't. Jeez, I don't know if that really. I don't. I don't understand what. Different, I don't think there's a terms of service violation if you use English versus English US if you're publishing a video in English. I think that's supposed to be what kind of English are you speaking in? You know, like I don't think it has anything to do with where you're physically located. I don't know. I don't get that into it. But here's what I think should be done is can I just, what I'm wondering. Is can I just whoops, dang it, that's not what I want to do. Is I'm still figuring out this whole YouTube interface. Is I want this all in one row, right? So there's a couple different ways I think. Ah, so right now, see what I've done here? Is I already duplicated this. So all I have to do is add this to here, and then we can call it good. So the way I'm gonna do that is by, and this is just mainly for example, because this is all probably going to get deleted all anyways. It's just me screwing around with it. Oh man, dang it. Okay, I copied this, make sure I copy that. And so if I just come over here and I just do this, whoops, that's, oh, I forgot the video description YouTube translation I don't even remember the exact title I don't really care okay ah okay so now what's happened is I can delete this row I think can I maybe I can't Ooh, if I can't delete it, that's even more uh, fascinating to me because now English United States is a whole new field that do I even want to have to deal with? 